wanted to take a moment. Uh, got a 427 here just to highlight kind of what this build was about. We'll cover some things on regulations and stuff that uh, some of our friends across the pond run into. Basically, 427, small block Ford, pretty, pretty, you know, standardized package for us, really. Uh, this started life basing off the 600 horsepower version, solid roller. The customer, he wanted something that turned a little bit more RPM and definitely was shooting for in the, you know, 650 horsepower range. So that led us to changing to a, a trick flow cylinder head. This is the twisted wedge and a Bill Mitchell manifold. Obviously, you can see he's still carbureted, um, and then a pretty standard front accessory drive from March. So we, we created this build, and as we moved along through the process, uh, we became aware from the customer that over in New Zealand that they can't have anything protrude out the hood, or as they call it, the bonnet. And uh, so we got to measuring heights and everything else, and we were definitely going to stick out the hood, even with you know, sinking the engine down on the engine mounts, we weren't going to have enough room. So that basically goes into the change orders and our ability to maneuver and customize it for the customer. So what we did was uh, went to a daily engineering dry sump. Uh, that was to get as much clearance on the bottom so we could set the motor down and then the intake manifold, unfortunately, it's not desirable to do this depending on plenum size, runner length, but we took uh, and chopped about an inch and a half off the carb flange and that got everything shrunk down. So the overall from crank center line or pan to the top of the motor with an air filter, we could get it in the package that was needed. So working with Daly and Jones, they created a pulley down here at the crank and a drive hub for the dry sump pump. So Daly was responsible for the pan and the pump and then basically Jones took over. We got him all the measurements so we could get everything just set up perfectly. Went on with a, I mean, it was a breeze. Uh, so we kept the look that he wanted as far as the pulley kit, got the dry sump to function, and then of course we went to the dyno. So ultimately we put a two inch spacer, high velocity spacer, underneath the carburetor and ran the motor and I don't have specific numbers but I think we were in the high 630s um, maybe even a 640 and so I was really pleased we pretty much we made the mark with the motor because we, we were shooting for 650 horsepower we do have an accessory drive where the alternators charging the battery on the dyno um, we're moving some fluid just through the, the power steering pump and of course the water pump and you'll see there's some ratio there so you know, you're spinning the water pump rather fast, so it, it's going to steal or rob a little bit of power. So usually 10, 15, maximum 20 horsepower. So when we're in the 30s to 40s, we pretty much uh, feel like we were there on the core long block. And then we took the spacer out to see what did that do to the, the plenum of the manifold, how did the motor react. And uh, so I think what we lost was 10 horsepower. And interestingly enough, looking through the, the air turbine that measures air, we lost 10 CFM, we lost 10 horsepower. So it all kind of jived. And at the end of the day, I think we're just a little over 625 horsepower. So we feel like we've really met Mark for the customer and we got it packaged to fit in that vehicle and to comply with the regulations that uh, these customers are up against these days. So to just touch lightly on the customization or our ability to adapt to the customer, kind of, uh, with, we're, we're lucky here in the United States. We can pretty much do whatever we want, um, for the most part. We'll use that term lightly. But um, we want to make sure that you understand that we can, we can adapt to comply with your re regulations. Just like this, from an overall hood uh, height or clearance, we made that happen. Touch base a little bit on emissions. You know, these standards everywhere are changing. So we've been working with different companies in the UK. They have very strict emissions laws uh, if we're, we're fuel injected. 
we're actually able to pass the emissions. Uh, I think they call it an IVA test there. So we're using five gas analyzer uh, in order to be able to be emissions compliant. So just want to highlight that we can, we can maneuver and make those changes to make sure that the engine package that you want in your ride that you're actually able to register and put it on the road.